In this video I will give you a very short introduction to what statistical prediction is and what statistical prediction models are. And my goal of this video is to try to, you to understand what a large language model, which is the technology underlying these AI chatbots, what they do and why they sometimes hallucinate or give you incorrect answers. So let's start with a motivating example. This is Claude 3, the smallest model. And uh, this is something that I encountered when I was preparing uh, material for a doctoral level entrepreneurship course. And I asked what is the contribution of Israel Kirchner in modern entrepreneurship. And then I asked Claude to explain or give me his, his biography. And it starts well, most of this is correct. So Israel Kirchner was born in 1930s. And then the biography ends that he passed away at 2021 at the age of 90. Well, he is very much alive still. So if you Google his name, you can view uh, that the dead guy is uh, giving a talk on YouTube in 2023. So now the question is, why does the large language model, Claude in this case, give us this incorrect answer that the person who is alive was actually di died a couple of years ago. To understand why we get incorrect answers from these tools, we need to understand a bit about what they do. So let's talk about statistical prediction a bit. So here's our some data, then we're going to fit a statistical prediction model to this data. So we have sales, a fictional company, how many units they sell, and this is how much they advertise. This might be something expensive equipment and this is your advertisement spending thousands, let's say that it's over a year. And we can see that um, if the company doesn't advertise anything, they sell about 150, 130 something that units. And then there is this uh, declining returns to advertisement. So a little bit of advertisement gets you from 150 to 200, but then going beyond 200 is it's much more difficult. So we have diminishing returns. The simplest way to model these data statistically is to use a regression model. And a regression model happens to be the simplest statistical prediction model. The idea of a regression model is that we try to explain these data with a line. And we draw the line through the data, how the line is defined, is not important for this talk, but it's a line that describes the data. And this line is defined by two parameters. So these parameters define a model. So we are saying that this beta zero gives us what is the, um, the value of, of the dependent variable, the predicted uh, variable, the sales, when ad spending is zero. And then beta one gives us how many units the uh, sales increases for each thousands of dollars spent on advertisement. In machine learning, you might also see that these are called weights and biases. So the beta one is weight because it tells how much uh, ad spending affects uh, sales. And then uh, beta zero is called the bias because it tells what is the, the overall level of sales even if we don't do any advertisement. And how the regression line here is calculated is that we take the bias, uh, 158, we add weight times ad spending. And then if we want to generate observations from this model, we add some error. So the idea of error is that it, there is some variation in the actual values around the predicted line. So this equation without the error here gives you the regression line. And if you want to, uh, simulate observations from this data, then you would add there. So we can uh, use this line to simulate more data. So if we have, if we know ad spending, then uh, we can just plot more predicted sales values here. This works fairly well as long as you predict within samples. So if you predict something that is, you have data, so uh, our predictions work fairly well between the, uh, 0 and 50,000. We are predicting uh, a bit more here than what, what we uh, are observing. Problems occur when we start to extrapolate. So if we are asking this model to predict 
how much we would sell if we actually increased our sales spending, our advertisement spending to a million. Here is the data. So we can predict uh, what the sales would look like if we advertised for a million dollars. Now this model is not very trustworthy for these kind of predictions. First of all, it doesn't consider that advertisement has diminishing uh, returns. So uh, the first dollar is more valuable than the tenth dollar and so on. Also, there are probably other constraints that come into play. So just advertising, uh, just increasing your advertisement hundredfold will, will not increase your sales hundredfold. There are other constraints. So the real value might be somewhere closer to uh, 200 or 500 units than 1,500 units. So extrapolation generally is not good in statistical models. At least this line of gross extra extrapolation. So we need to understand now that we calibrate a model using data. In this case, a regression model. It gives us some, some parameters and that parameters, they give us an equation and we can use that equation to calculate predictions. The predictions are close to the original data as long as the values that we predict with are close to the original data. All right, now let's take a look at how this same idea works with text. So this is our training data and we are going to specify a small language model and we try to predict uh, more text like this. And the idea of, of modeling language is that instead of looking at what is the, the predicted sales are uh, given advertisements, we look at what is the predicted word given the previous word. And this kind of model will be called biogram, but it's, it's not super important to understand how it works. But the general idea is that when we start to train this kind of a prediction model that works with language, we take a look at, for example, the word the. And uh, the is here, and the is followed by cat three times, it's followed by dog once and mat once. So we can say that when we see the word the, then 60% of the case we have cat as the next word, and 20% of the case we have dog, 20% case we have mat. So that gives us kind of like this probabilities, and we can start simulating new data from this model. Then uh, after cat, we have sat, the, and run. So all of these have 33% probability and so on. So we can calculate the probabilities. This is the word here on, on this uh, on rows and then columns is, is the next word. We can start using this uh, model to generate data and uh, this is what large language models do. So we have an Initial, let's call it prompt. So this is what we would write to ChatGPT, for example. We just start with the. And then uh, what the model looks at, it looks that, okay, the word is the. When we uh, predict the next word, we have cat. 60% dog and then 20% mat. And it randomly picks one of these. This has 60% probability, 20% and 20%, and it picks cat by random. Then after uh, cat, we have either uh, ran, sat, and the with equal probabilities, the model just picks randomly sat. And after sat, we always have on, so that is what the model will predict, and so on until it predicts away, which is the last word. And this is uh, how language models work. So we have a word, and then we predict what is the next word. Then we uh, take the, the predicted word and we, pro, uh, and we predict the, the following up word. This is uh, a pretty simple thing and uh, this story doesn't really make sense. The cat sat on the cat, sat on the mat, the cat sat on the cat, ran away. But it looks somewhat similar to the original data. We can make this a lot better if we start to look at broader context. So instead of looking at just previous word, we could uh, take a look at the two previous words or three previous words. We can increase the, the context length. So this small language model has context length of one word and then we have 81 parameters because we have 81 probabilities. I just didn't uh, include the zeros in this matrix. This is how ChatGPT works. So it uh, looks what I have written this far 
what is the likely next word. ChatGPT, Claude Gemini, they all work with the same principle. They are just a lot bigger. So instead of, uh, of 81 parameters like we had here, uh, these models are in the hundreds of billions, probably in the trillions of parameters. And the context length is not one word, but it is something uh, called a token, which is like a word part or a letter combination. And uh, for example, Claude has 100,000 tokens. That's like multiple books that it looks at when it, it tries to predict the next word. Now we get to uh, look at why did Claude predict incorrectly? And this is because of extrapolation. So the training data for Claude when it was trained using like most of the internet does not contain information about the death of Kirchner. And it's natural because he is still alive. And here we have that the person died, uh, was born in 1930. And the training data also contains lots of biographies of people born in 1930. And most of those biographies end with explaining when the person passed. So the, the language model does not have information about the passing of Kirchner, but it has seen a general pattern that uh, when the, the, the biography starts by telling that the person was born in 1930, then the likely ending for the biography is just that the person died somewhere in, in 2020s, for example. So this is the basic idea of statistical prediction. You calibrate a data, calibrate a model based on data, and then you try to predict new observations. In large language models, you predict the next word or the next word part. In regression models, you predict a value, for example.